I use lychee slicer, so here I've loaded up the STL, or in this case actually an OBJ file. Looking alright, no errors, so let's go to rotate it. I'm trying to avoid having anything horizontal because the printer will struggle with that. Um, and since there are lights on one side of it, I'll make sure those lights are near the ground so that any supports for the lights don't have to pass through the wheels. Let's lift it a bit and then have a look. Again, look around the side, nothing really horizontal. The bottom of the chain is possibly a problem. Let's go to prepare now and I'll use light supports because it's only a very small print. I'm going to use the low level of support density. So I've got the minimum number of supports. I'm also going to change the raft because the raft I prefer to use is quite a large one. Now I'm using the free version of Lychee Slicer. So I've got a limited number of uh, rafts, but that one is fine. Now we'll just have a look and see if there's anything obviously wrong. It's a good idea just to strengthen up the odd support that's going to significant sections. One of them is the uh, the bottom corner of that tray. And I'll just make that one a medium support just to make sure that it's got plenty of support on that corner. The wheels are another possible area where it needs a bit of extra support. But I'll, I'll see if I can get away with it this time and not make any changes to it. Next thing to do is to check for islands. And uh, first of all, we've got to that's right, select the um, select the item, and then search for islands. It's found twenty nine of them. So the next stage is to support those those islands. But rather than using full supports, I use mini supports. These are very thin ones, um, which just make sure that we get a little bit of feed to each of these problem areas. So one has gone in there, as you see, there's another one just on the bottom here, but I can move the support to do that. The only problem there is moving the support that way brings it a bit close to the bike frame. So I need to just make sure yeah, it's clearing it there. We'll just keep a, an eye on that one though and see what it does. The thing to avoid is any supports passing through the model itself, because they are really difficult to get off. Another mini support going in there. And there. Um, and there and there. There's a grain one there, which means it, you can't actually get to it without moving round a bit. So we'll just uh, get that one supported and then go down and find this and give that a little mini support. Mini supports are great because they come off really easily. Awful lot along the bottom of that pedal arm. And to be honest, I don't think I need to do them all. I think that'll probably give us sufficient support there. Move that big support into bigger support into place and then give us a bit of support to the other pedal arm. Perhaps a bit to that one. So we've still got a few islands showing but we're getting to a point now where most of them are covered. There's a grey one there. Where is it? Oh, it's one of those. I'll just move that over a bit. That's it. That's got it. That one, move it over. That one. Oh, yeah, that's fine.
Well, I think that's looking pretty good now. We've only got a few, a few areas left that need some support, but I think uh, I think we can probably live with those. So we'll save the file. Perhaps a little bit of extra support there at the end of the pedal. Save the file. And so the next thing to do is to export it. Now, because I'm using the free version, I have to sit now for 30 seconds and watch their advertising. But to be honest, that's a very small price to pay for an extremely good piece of software. Run down and find my memory stick and export it. So she's building it up layer by layer. And you can see here that we're using water washable resin. The estimated print time it says is two hours, 33 minutes. Um, practice says it's more nearer four hours. It, it's really not very good at estimating print time. The file's been saved onto the uh, onto the, the drive, so whip that out of the computer and take it down to the garage. Now this is my setup in the garage. The garage is cold, it's actually within the house, but it's still cold, especially in winter. And so I keep the printer in its own cabinet, which is temperature controlled. Now the, the, there's a thermostat on the side there, that's just a, a little unit I built up that monitors the temperature and there's a little heater in there. I think it's about a 100 watt heater and a fan, a little blower that keeps the temperature at round about 26 degrees C. That, that, that seems to work best for me. It's actually the heater switches off when it gets to 26 degrees C. So it's something approaching 26. Um, and that, that seems to work very well for me. There's also an awful lot of heat comes out of the printer itself when it's running. And I find that once the print started going, you can turn the, the heater off and it keeps the temperature quite nicely on its own. Over on the right there, there's an ultrasonic bath. Now I use IPA in the bath, but that IPA is kept in a plastic bag and is floating in water. The reason for that is that there's a bit of a fire hazard putting IPA directly into the ultrasonic bath. So there's water in the bath and um, a plastic bag with IPA in it. And it's that plastic bag, obviously, that the print will go into, as we'll see in a minute. Next to it, to the left, is just an ordinary tank for the final rinse. Again, in IPA. Uh, so I'll open the door on the printer box, and there's the printer with the final version and sitting in there. That comes out and then it's left to drip for a while, probably about an hour, to be honest. When it's dripped, I can then take the built plate out, slip the model off the built plate, usually comes off quite easily. And put that back where it belongs, tighten it up. And now the model itself goes into, you can see the plastic bag there, into the bag with the IPA in it. And that goes on, in my case, for 10 minutes. I'm sure I could do it for less than 10 minutes, but 10 minutes is plenty. It ships absolutely everything off. Once it's out of there, it goes into the final rinse. So it's been washed in IPA, even though it's water washable resin. And now it comes out 
for a final rinse in IPA. The reason I do this is that I tried using water washable resin and washing it in water, but then I had all this water with resin floating in it, uh, which is lethal stuff, and there was no way of curing the resin in the water. Well, this way I can cure the resin um, in the IPA just by leaving it out in daylight um, for a considerable time if it takes it. I mean, we are in England for heaven's sake. So, uh, but eventually that solidifies down and you can reuse the IPA. So here's a clean final rinse in IPA and the prince comes out, goes for a wash. Uh, and the wash is just in water, so I'm washing the IPA off because that's not anything like as contaminating to the uh, to the environment. Now yeah, looks pretty good. Everything seems to be there. We'll have a closer look in a minute. Well, there it is. There's a close up, and you can see the mini supports there doing their job. We got away with the chain. Um, that looks complete as well. And those again, those mini supports will just jump off. That's where I was concerned about the closeness of that support to the frame, but no, we've been fine with that. That's cleared too. Because we've not cured this yet, the supports will come off quite easily. You can usually just tug them off. You can use cutters. Obviously you can use cutters, but I find if you can tug them off, they come off much cleaner. I think we'll speed this up a bit because it's not very exciting, is it? Not with the cutters, chop the bottom of these supports off so at least that frees up the raft a bit. It's all done. Now remember I said I thought we could get away with the wheels. Well, in fact, if you look closely at this print, we didn't really. There are flat bits just on the base of the wheels. Certainly the rear wheel looks pretty flat tired. Clean it up where you need to with the scalpel. And apart from the flat rear tyre, that's pretty well done. All it needs now is a lick of paint and um, jobs are good.